Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome everyone to this webinar entitled Build an Intelligent Enterprise with Artificial Intelligence, which is organized by Artificial Intelligence and Data Analytics Lab and SAP. Thank you everyone for being here as uh, audience in this uh, event. I want to introduce a special thanks for our guests, Mr. Tariq al Mine and Mr. Isam al Mas'udi. It's a great opportunity to get to know each, every one of you and work together in this event. Before we start the event, I want to introduce our guests with a brief bio for each. I will start with Tariq al Mine, a leader with over, th over than 14 years of hands-on experience in information technology area, uh, arena, combined techno-functional element of business and digital transformation enablement, pro uh, proven leadership in multinational business transformation programs, building practice and capabilities across line of business and various industries, draw business value roadmap and establish digitization and digitization programs for revamped uh, efficient digital platforms that enables business transformation through tailored business use case. And our second guest is Mr. Isam Masoudi, Senior Solution Advisor, engaged in business digital transformation journeys, utilized SAP platform technologies. Uh, his experience spans various technologies and implementation methodology focus on future proving business operation through digital transformation and the introduction and the introduction of data management and analytic solution. He has 16 years of experience within diverse, uh, diverse industries in government, petrochemical, manufacturing, healthcare, and telecommunication. Uh, so uh, before we start, there's a request here, please, if you have any question, we can wait for the Q&A session, or you can drop your question in the chat box. Then our speaker will revert back to you after completing their part. The mic now is yours, Mr. Tarek and Mr. Assam, to start your part. Thank you so much, Dr. Suleiman. We are really honored and, and uh, privileged to stand in front of uh, Prince Sultan University and the students. Uh, inshallah, we'll make this uh, session as much uh, joyful and realistic and interactive as possible. Uh, so uh, we have designated the title for today uh, to be narrowed down from the intelligent enterprise concept that SAP brought into, let's say, a more specific and concentric uh, subject of AI business services. So, so when we talk about AI business service, we are going to discuss about introduction, what does AI business service means in the overall equation. And we're gonna hover onto selective two use cases that are being capitalized and utilized nowadays in the market from AI business service. And then we're gonna conclude with the, the Q&A part, inshallah. So uh, yeah, just like we have mentioned already in the webinar highlights that artificial intelligence have failed to live up to the hype. If we try to look at the results of multiple recent surveys that companies are struggling to become AI champions because of multiple factors. And these factors can be visualized in the trends that we can see here. So we can say that 85% of models that are being developed fail to make it into production environment where they produce tangible results for organizations. While 50% of companies say that this is due to complexity of development, implementation, and the overall deployment of artificial intelligence in a broader, uh, scalable, and governed fashion. Needless to say that another dimension, which is, let's say, the skill set and the gap in it, that around 250,000 personal uh, skills gap have been identified and projected uh, in data science topic, and that's only in the U.S., by the way. Uh, and it's getting more and more difficult and expensive to get the right resources to tackle project. So in a nutshell, if we want the companies to be a true leaders and true AI champions, it means that we need to think differently than we used to. We need to think beyond the hype that AI has been envisioned. 
I can literally see nowadays that when, when people talk about AI, they immediately imagine flashback from movies and robotics, etc. But in reality, nowadays, or even previously, there are multiple business scenarios with, with AI segments that has been incorporated into applications, but we don't see them. They are seamless and, and more or less intangible. And that's what, what we want to hover today and shed the light into. So the key message here, we need to be uh, over the hype and reshape the way that we are treating AI uh, in order to make it much more useful in the day-to-day -day business services. These are collective estimates and readings from a variety of big tech uh, firms and consulting uh, researchers revolving around how machine learning prediction and accuracy level is, is really relevant compared to human accuracy. Bottom line, no matter how machine can reflect exponential growth in accuracy compared to human, still the 100% accuracy is unattainable and cannot be achieved and what we need to focus upon is the training models for these algorithms to sustain and grow the learning curve and keep reinventing the business models. So we can see here that subsequently, one of the intent of machine learning is to inject it within the business model in order to re-engineer the business processes which are encapsulated beyond or underlying the business applications and leverage automation. That's one factor. The second factor is that we need to look more into uh, how machine learning is being incorporated into analytics to be more into the predictive and the prescriptive uh, part of the analytical insights rather than the traditional focus on uh, diagnostic and descriptive analytics. And of course, by that, we, we need to push more for the next generation of user experience, promoting more channels of listen and interact rather than absorb only. So if, if you haven't seen this slide before, this is typically the intelligent enterprise in, in a nutshell. What do we mean by intelligent enterprise? It symbolizes continuous improvement process that comes between operational factor and the overlooked factor, factor which is the experience part here, which is the intangible uh, part here. The infinity loop here emphasizes the importance of ongoing improvement empowered by the centricity of the intelligence layer that we will hover on today. So, upon the high level breakdown of each domain, the intelligence suite, and I, I believe majority of audience know, know, knows what, what do we mean by intelligent suite, especially around the S4HANA, the success factor, the, in, the, 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 the industrial flavor and the line of business flavor of the solutions that revolves around the customer, the HR, the finance, manufacturing. So traditionally, these what they call academically the MIS systems. And MIS systems, they are, let's say, reshaped in a way that we don't segregate them anymore. We don't put ERP or enterprise resource planning uh, independently from the supply chain solution, from the procurement solution, but nowadays they are uh, combined all together in what we call a digital core uh, application or core, let's say, application with unified business processes over these layers. Qualtrix is a solution uh, representing the experience management platform that SAP acquired in 2018. And that really shows truly why SAP is being ahead of the curve. Experience data has been overlooked for a while. And you can imagine that we have <laughs> taken a clear notice of it uh, in the past years. And by this acquisition, we are now reflecting a new dimension of how we are uh, measuring the KPIs or measuring the operational rhythm and uh, clicking the story with what goes in the intangible uh, dimension, which is the experience factor. So. And by the way, and in Qualtrics, we can see that the dimensions of it revolves around four main domains. Customer experience, which reflects the true sentiment of how customers are feeling about a particular service, product, etc., or certain experience, uh, if we want to capitalize and generalize on their satisfaction and dissatisfaction. Employees, of course, it goes without saying, that's a crucial part of any organizational customer journey and successful journey, hence their voice matters as we will see the constructive improvement to the value chain. How people truly see our product or services combined to the brand in the market. 
So if we want to say that how people perceive or see uh, Prince Sultan University, typically Prince Sultan University nowadays, they take it, let's say, on an operational manner, they measure everything in an operational manner, but can we link the story between the operational measurement KPIs reports and combine them with that sentimental and intangible fact of experience? Yes, we can. We can say that the customer eventually it's comprising of applicants, students, you name it, employees, I mean faculty, staff members, product, it's the edu it's the educational part of the of, of the story. And the brand, it's the overall umbrella of Prince Sultan University. And what does it mean in the market? Some people when they see Prince Sultan, it clicks and resonates with one word or one let's say meaning to them. So that's why we really harness the fact that experience data, it's imperative to complete a story. And of course, needless to say, we cannot link the two stories together without having the business technology platform. And by the way, we are saying business. We don't say, let's say, technical or IT because we do, uh, let's say, capitalize on the fact that these technological factors are merely meant uh, in existence to serve the business context uh, in all means. And that's why the, the IT keeps evolving with time uh, exponentially. And that's why uh, we link it to the story of why we named AI for business service, because we don't give AI for AI, we give AI to serve the purpose of, of AI in the existence of business. Here just we are trying to set the focus that we are going to discuss AI for business, which is part of the intelligence uh, layer. And that, uh, let's say, goes on a detailed level, what's the context and what's the business technology platform is comprising of. It's what's under the hood, uh, essentially. So AI for business, of course, because it talks to the business context, it could be a blend. It could be a blend of multiple domains in what we see here in, the, in this diagram. It, 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 of course, it could be a blend because we want to comprise the end state use case and story that serves the business context. So as a sample, as a sample, we can say that for today's session that we're gonna revolve around the intelligent technology domain, the database management and data, uh, and database and data management domain, and a few bit, bits and pieces on the business services domain. Needless to say, it's not concentric to these three. When we take the bigger picture on multiple use cases, we can take from every domain and combine it all together to get the designated application that we want it to function in the way that we are intending to do. So, it's important before we talk technology and go deep dive in these use cases, we need to take a step back to reality and truly measure uh, what we see here on the right hand side. What's the high level business outcomes that needed for organizations, society, or even a country level? Then combine it with the best practices from all over the industry flavors and the line of businesses uh, applications and dimensions and use cases being evolved and gradually tailored down to seek the results and keep evolving them. So this is another angle of the story. And here we can see how this slide shows how AI act as both being an integrated component in the upper layer, and yani this layer, it symbolizes the application, the business as usual, or the intelligence suite that we have talked about in the past slide. This one is being sort of in the middle between the intelligence suite and the core data intelligence layer which is, let's say, a blend of business services and as well a back-end uh, capability from technology uh, area. Why do we segregate these, th these three layers? For a reason. Because the end result of uh, business services could be injected within the digital core system, which we say, the ERB, the supply chain, and within the process itself. In some scenarios, it's going to be more hassle and more problematic to, to infuse it within the core uh, application. Hence, it's better that to keep it isolated in a, like a template or a reusable format here, like we see here in this is AI, AI business services layer. For example, case in point, service ticket intelligence, data attribute recommendation, invoice object recommendation, and so on and so forth. So instead of reshaping the application and, and go into, let's say, production hassles, we can interconnect it with the middle layer as a secondary option of how these, uh, let's say, augmented applications and augmented innovation cycles of the application. Of course, behind the scene, we do, have, we do have the data intelligence that has the predictive models, has the machine learning factor, has the 
the custom models, the templates, everything is there. So when it comes to competencies and capabilities like data science, of course, it's needed there. But the beauty about introducing this layer in the middle, it can be contextualized for business users without the need of, let's say, capitalizing on key capability that we have said in the pain area that, uh, that, that within, 2020, uh, within 2024, we're gonna have, let's say, like a, a, key, a key issue about uh, uh, catching on with, uh, uh, with the, let's say, with, with the number of uh, resources that are needed in data science. So that's the idea of having this vessel or template layer that can cross function back and forth between the upper layer and the down layer, which serves the business at the end of the day. And this is a holistic view that shows as of today, uh, and by the way, this is another angle of the past slide to show in detail what are the pre-built use cases and applications that can be whether standalone application, which we can see in the right hand corner, or it can be embedded within the application that we, have, that we can see here. This is part of S4HANA, by the way, part of the digital core, the, the, the core, let's say, uh, ERP uh, system. Or it can be uh, uh, built like a template reusable uh, for the entire journey. And what we are going to focus after this introduction today on two main selective use cases, service ticket intelligence, which contributes to service disk operation and how automation can support to save and response time and invoice object recommendation to conduct automation and prediction of objects relevant to financial invoices that will save significant operation time in finance and avoid manual entries and error. Needless to say that even if we use this one or that one or the other ones, it doesn't mean that we're gonna go solo on those. No, at the end of the day, when we combine the use case, the use case would be definitely a blend of multiple domains here. And we're gonna see today uh, how the invoice object recommendation is being augmented or combined with a subsequent document information extraction that helps it fulfills the story and the journey for it. So I would hand the floor to you, Islam, to start the service ticket intelligence. Thank you, Tariq, thank you. So uh, I will take you through uh, two use cases uh, we have uh, on SAP systems uh, utilizing the artificial intelligence. The first case is actually uh, regarding the service ticket intelligence uh, and how SAB artificial intelligence is, uh, is supporting this process. Um, so what, uh, what happens actually that uh, uh, we train the models of the machine learning and the AI with the historical data. Usually we, rec we recommend to have at least 12 months of data to train the machine learning and, and uh, algorithms uh, to, to build the right decision making uh, that the AI will take. Uh, and, and if we are talking about the service ticket intelligence, uh, we are talking mainly about three parts, which is the classification. So once the ticket comes to the system, how actually the system will classify it to the right category and also it provide uh, a solution recommendation for the engineer or for the for the guy on the on the field uh, in the same time uh, it predict using the predictive uh, analytics it predict the right classification or sorry the prioritization for the ticket let's have a look uh, into the problem So uh, the problem here, actually, uh, what happens in the in the in the in the real life, uh, the customer service usually they receive a lot of uh, a lot of tickets, uh, especially if we talk about the last couple of months, where uh, the whole country actually were using the um, uh, the applications for ordering food or maintenance. Uh, you can imagine how much load these applications will have and how much issues they are facing with the customers. So uh, what happens usually in the, in the regular systems for customer service, they receive the tickets. And you can see the customer service uh, agent, he have a huge list of tickets. He need to go through it one by one to identify and prioritize the ticket and assign it to the right, uh, to the right guy or uh, to the right team. Uh, if we look to the example on the screen, uh, we have one customer who is facing 
uh, a fridge door uh, is not closing. You know, uh, if you are facing such an issue, means that uh, your food will be spoiled. You have to throw everything in the trash. You can imagine that if the customer service take that long time just to classify that you are a high priority uh, uh, ticket, your food, your food is already spoiled. So uh, how actually uh, the solution uh, from SAB works Could you switch, please? Next screen, yeah. So how, that, uh, how the solution is actually from SAB works that embedding the artificial intelligence and the machine learning within the process itself. So once the ticket is received, it immediately get categorized and classified to the right uh, queue. For example, we have bill and payment queries, we have product returns tickets, and high priority complaints. So, uh, you know, uh, based on the machine learning from the um, uh, historical data, it knows that this issue is high priority for the customer. It means that he will face bigger issues uh, if, uh, if, this, uh, uh, if this problem did not get solved. So it actually, uh, what happened that it will uh, classify the ticket and uh, it will even assign it to the right team or the right uh, agent, uh, field agent. And also it gives the recommendation, it recommends the solution. Uh, in this terms, uh, we can see, for example, the engineer who is going to, to fix the fridge problem, uh, at least he, he got the, solu the recommendation solution so he go to the customer ready with his toolings and uh, spare bars so he can fix the issue immediately. It doesn't, doesn't need to give multiple visits just to, uh, because he did not get uh, the, the right information in the beginning. So if we move to the next slide, uh, talking about uh, a moment of truth, uh, uh, we can say that one moment actually can change the customer perception of the customer service. Uh, I believe most of us, uh, if, if not all of us, we already faced such situation where we go to the customer service, we take long queues or waiting for a long time to get our uh, problem solved. So 16 industries actually reported that the customer service and technical support have the biggest impact on the, in, on the customer experience. Even if I have the greatest application to, to, uh, to buy a product or to get uh, a service, and uh, I face an issue with the customer service, most likely I will never go uh, order from this company again. For, yeah. So this is actually by Gartner. Uh, Gartner, they mentioned in their report that by 2020, um, the customer service uh, at least will be 60% uh, uh, will be uh, driven by AI and, and machine learning. The system can take decisions immediately and send, uh, as we mentioned, classifying the tickets and um, uh, prioritize it and assign it to the right uh, team or the right uh, field agent. Uh, so no longer human intermediary, uh, you know, uh, uh, no human intervention needed. Uh, the more that uh, we trust, uh, the, more, the, the more data actually get feed in the system, it trains the, the machine learning algorithms and the AI. Uh, and by that actually we, uh, we have more trust in the system that it's taking more right decisions and maybe after a couple of years, uh, we, can, we can leave the system to, to uh, act on, on these tickets by itself. So uh, we will take you through a short uh, two minutes video actually uh, to demo how actually the solution works on, uh, on SAP.
great. So just a quick recap on the on what was demoed. Uh, a ticket was received from a customer who sent an email. Uh, similarly, if there was a phone call or a chatbot, uh, you know, these days we see a lot of chatbots. Uh, all this data actually uh, will be going through the, the machine learning and artificial intelligence uh, algorithms. So the system will classify the ticket and uh, recommend based on similar tickets as you as you saw on the on the video, and also it predicts the prioritization based on confidence uh, levels. So the system have uh, have it shows the user some confidence levels about. Uh, uh, about the prioritization as well. Uh, what happens here is actually the customer service guy, uh, he will be focusing more into the real, uh, the real work, uh, the high value work actually. This is what uh, he was hired for. Uh, not just only to read and uh, refill the system with the right information, but uh, he, he provide a valuable service uh, to the customer. So my colleague uh, Tariq again, he will take you through uh, three different scenarios for the uh, service ticket intelligence. Thank you so much, Isam. Really appreciate it. Uh, actually, the, the, the past slide was more or less like a, a comprehensive coverage of the service ticket intelligence. And needless to say, we say that there, there could be multiple, multiple scenarios uh, drawn and driven within the service ticket intelligence domain. And as we have mentioned earlier that not necessarily that service ticket intelligence, when we draw the scenario, it will act solely. We, we will see uh, some, some kind of blend scenarios that can be augmented for the entire journey from receiving the information. <laughs> from, uh, receiving information from the customer side all the way through the result that we are designating, like the high satisfaction. So, honestly, uh, just like Hassan have mentioned, Yanni, with COVID 19 situation, Every one of us, and I've, I've been personally using many online applications that, of course, your front end people are the customer service who are running 24 by 7 just to meet up your expectations. And I can literally differentiate the way that customer service agents respond from application to another based on the operating, operating model of that particular uh, company or startup. And I feel really, really sad for the customer service disk agent that they need to go exerting their effort beyond the tolerance to at least uh, uh, augment the gap that could have been filled if they would have like this layer, uh, the, the service technical intelligence layer that would significantly minimize their manual effort and just let them focus on how they will deal with, with, with us as customer. And uh, that's, a, the, 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 that's a, I mean, the, the core dilemma here. I don't know how this one was, <laughs> anyway. The second uh, use case uh, scenario, you can see that we have a blend of, let's say, IRP APOT, and we have a blend of business document uh, processing here. So is that, I mean, that's something considerable. And the third one, of course, we can see here that we can as well infuse conversational AI uh, as, let's say, a, a tool to absorb all the insights and information from the users whether it's an email format, whether it's from, from, from different applications, and how it's going to be, let's say, uh, passed on to the service ticket intelligence, moved away to the IRPA bot, and then pushed for the customer service agent so it, he can have the wisdom just to summarize what he has to say to the customer without the hassle of understanding this entire life cycle. So immediately, these three layers are only examples. Uh, just before, I think we need to... Uh, Did someone update this one here? Just I need some help how to. I think this one was updated by someone else. Anyway, uh, Isan. Thank you, Tariq. So now uh, let's go through the second use case uh, we wanted to present to you, which is actually uh, regarding. Uh, helping the finance or the procurement department to speed up uh, their work and the process. So as you see on the screen, uh, this is the normal situation or, or the problem actually that companies, uh, most likely the big companies face. They receive uh, a big amount of invoices uh, and uh, account receivable agent or clerk, he need to go through the invoice one by one 
he need to extract the data by his, uh, you know, uh, by looking into the invoice and getting the information and fill it into the system. After that, he need to uh, search uh, manually through the system to match uh, what the general ledger accounts uh, these invoices should be assigned to. So uh, he can assign it to the right uh, cost center. Um, so looking into a big account, this is, uh, this is you know, uh, you can imagine with the big, uh, big firms, uh, if you do this for every single invoice, it's really uh, a hectic uh, job. So if we move uh, into the uh, second uh, screen showing the solution, that uh, uh, it is embedded within the SAV system as well. Uh, what happens is actually using uh, OCR or uh, optical character recognition and document processing capabilities, it actually export this data and fill it directly to the fields and uh, it gets extracted uh, and handed over to material learning and artificial intelligence and even prediction models to, uh, to bring uh, the highest probable, um, uh, you know, accounts that sh this invoice should be assigned. So you can imagine uh, the work here is almost zero. Only the, what the uh, account receiver or, or, or account payable uh, clerk, what he need to do is just to verify uh, the right account. So the system is actually suggesting multiple solutions, uh, multiple uh, accounts and he just select the right one. It's even giving a higher probability for the right uh, account. Uh, again, uh, whenever we are using this, the system will keep learning until uh, it reach a high confidence. Uh, and uh, even us as a human, we have more conf uh, confidence in the system that it can take the right decision and we can leave it to work and completely automate uh, this process. Actually, I, I missed the line that was drawn from here to here. I think the one who drew it has, uh, let's say, like a vision, understanding that this slide will land. So. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, just a quick recap. So whenever we receive uh, an invoice without a purchasing order, uh, we mean that it's not linked to a purchase order created already in the system. So the system uh, uh, capitalizing the AI and ML, it identify the correct GL accounts uh, and it create uh, invoice posting. So all these actually, as, as I explained, it automatically assign and uh, assign the, the GL account and propose uh, the, uh, this information to the accountant. Um, my, Tariq, uh, my colleague Tariq will also uh, show you a couple of scenarios and then he will take you through a demo that uh, we, we usually do uh, us as, as SMP, uh, SAP employees. So Tariq, it's yours. Yeah, so uh, this classification model, I think it's, uh, it, it's like a recap of what you said before, uh, Islam, and that would be uh, something for the, for the audience to entertain and have a, a deeper look at it later on. So uh, just before we run into the, uh, the demo and use case that, uh, that Isam have mentioned, needless to say that in the same manner that we have seen in the service ticket intelligence, of course, we are having or, or we are envisioning as a sample two scenarios here uh, revolving around the finance invoicing processing. This is the first one. And this is the second one. And we can see that the document uh, information extraction, how it's interact with the invoice object recommendation to seek the results. And that's where I would like to quickly just, uh, this slide, uh, we don't need to worry about it too much. This is to, search, to show just how, I mean, what's the footprint of, uh, uh, of the AI business services and application uh, on all customers who are using it. And you can see uh, the name of SAP, Conquer. And uh, SAP Conquer, to introduce what is it, what, what is it? SAP Conquer, it's uh, a travel and expense management solution. And we use it internally as employees whenever we want to book travels, whenever we have invoices, personal invoices, uh, based on our travels that we need to settle and get paid for. Hence, we can see just see a quick example of how this is uh, being captured. Just click expense it open from the camera. And even if you have the invoice already saved, you can just take it from the library 
and go over it. Just capture the screen and uh, document information extraction or the OCR previously, as Hassan mentioned, it takes care of this and do the actual, let's say, analysis. And the beauty about this one is that you can, let's say, retake, use, or put comments, then submit it uh, for your usage. I know that some of you may say this is too good to be true, but quite frankly, you can see that I recorded this from my personal mobile using my, my personal SAP Conquer application on uh, multiple invoices. The first screen, it's the invoice one. And, uh, and by the way, uh, here you can see why or, or how the travel and expense booking is being maintained. I open an invoice, this is from uh, Dima Plaza, King Abdullah uh, Road. And you can see that even uh, even with the shadow, the it, it's rigid. Uh, it got the actual figure exactly and as it is. The second uh, invoice and why why did I put it? It's to capitalize on what Isam has been mention, mentioning earlier regarding training model. You can see I bought an invoice from Jaleel. Everything is not clear. It's almost nearly uh, dimmed out. The light is not good, and yet. You can see by reading the amount, it's nearly got it perfectly. Only the fraction part is, is, is inconsistent. And what we can do, you can update it as a user. By updating as a user, it's like enriching the content. It's like training, for, for, uh, training the engine from my end as a user. And that's the beauty about uh, these use cases that symbolizes the AI business. Uh, and, and, you, and actually what we want or, or, or would love from you as audience is that this is the official website for AI business services. The beauty about it is it's accessible for everyone and it's community-based. You can contribute to the existing business services and how it can be productionized later on. You can see, for example, this business entity recognition, it's in beta version, which means that uh, the product team are working on it. They are opening up community in order to, uh, to, to, to receive and intake whatever is needed uh, to enrich the content of these business, AI business services. And that concludes our session today. And I would like to uh, entertain the audience for Q&A session. Uh, thank you so much for hearing us. Yeah, please, any questions uh, you have, uh, you can even unmute yourself or write it in the chat. I'll try to keep this one open, at least if there are some questions about some slides, at least the audience may can see the slide number and just pinpoint where slide or which slide we need to jump to. No questions so far? Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Tarek and Mr. Isan for this valuable uh, presentation. Now uh, we open the floor for questions from the audience. Any question, guys? Okay, can you hear me? We can yes. hear you. Yeah, okay. Any question? We usually love to question, make please. Question, please. Yes. Feel free to so ask. So if please. you like, uh, yes, please. Okay, it looks no questions. Mr. Hassan, I think no. you can remove the unmute for the audience. Uh, yeah, I already Zira has a question, but she cannot unmute herself. Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. 
Uh, uh, Dr. Suleiman, uh, thank you very much right, for uh, running uh, the session, right? And uh, just to steer right, uh, some discussion about uh, the issue, um, I did actually already right, attend the presentation. Thank you very much for, right, for both of you right, uh, for delivering uh, this uh, nice presentation and uh, talking about right, uh, this important uh, subject. Of course, right, and I want to steer right, some discussion, so I don't have really right, a specific question. I want just to raise a discussion about the difference between services right, and platforms. Uh, services, right, actually are, yani you call to write what you are providing today, ticket, uh, service ticket, and invoice uh, services. So uh, you labeled these, right, as services, right, like, for example, let's take uh, the first one, right, the ticketing system. Uh, this is the service provided, right, by uh, HR, and the customers, right, are us. We send the right a request to right to fix something right, and uh, as you mentioned, right, the guy has so many requests right. He has to uh, find out right uh, a team uh, to go and fix right, and there is time constraints, of course, right. That he has actually to serve. Uh, uh, now, it, uh, uh, are you listening to me? You, uh, yes. My voice is uh, yes. is clear. It's clear. Yeah, it's clear. clear. It's clear. Type. Thank you. Now, uh, you see, uh, uh, my my actually right uh, uh, point of discussion right, that I would like to raise right uh, among us right this evening is the difference between digital economy and shared economy. You see, we used to have right Internet of Information and bits right, and uh, that was actually right the digital economy. Now, this thing right is obsolete now. Right, people now moving to Internet of Value, um, sharing life. Right and uh, shared economy, right, is uh, uh, like uh, right uh, material things, right, uh, not really red bits and information. They move up right to uh, sharing right value. So it's internet of values now. Uh, now, uh, so services becomes as a matter of fact, right, provided in a platform. And uh, the simple example that we all know is Uber, for example. Uber, right, uh, is a platform, right? There is demand and supply. There's matching. Everything is done automatic, right? And uh, we see the system scale, right, uh, very nicely, right? Uh, thousands and thousands of people, right, at rush time, right, actually make requests, right, and they receive service. Um, a couple of... Uh, 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 months ago, right, maybe more than this, right, uh, we went to visit, right, uh, Alamat, right, which as a matter of fact is a own Jahiz, Jahiz, right, is a food delivery system, and again, right, you see, they have a platform, right, that is, uh, uh, you see, uh, unmanned, unmanned means there is no call center, there is no human, right, in the system, and they serve about 8,000 orders a day. A day, every day, you read 8,000 orders. Of course, you read before, you read actually the Corona, of course. Uh, so, so platforms now read are very attractive. And even read when we looked at Jahaz, you read they have classification system to the type of calls, the type of right of food delivery. Like, for example, read they showed us that, uh, that the calls for, for example, right. Uh, 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 a certain type of food, right, actually starts actually to pick up, right, after 12 o'clock in the evening. And, uh, for example, shawarma, for example, right, and they show us, right, the statistics and the analysis. Very interesting, right, and they do, as a matter of fact, marketing to open, right, new centers and new, actually, right, uh, uh, branches, right, uh, uh, in Riyadh, right, and Jeddah. I'm not sure about Jeddah, but I guess, right, we were uh, seeing, right, uh, Riyadh. Now, there is lots of platforms, right? Um, I just mentioned, right, actually this uh, uh, food delivery system. And, uh, and uh, for example, right, another very good example, right, actually uh, internationally is TaskRabbit. And TaskRabbit is, that is a handyman online. If you have, uh, right, as you said, fridge, right, that is broken, or yet you go to the marketplace, it's called TaskRabbit, and you post, right, actually, right, your uh, issue, right, I want to fix my fridge, and here is actually the brand and the model, and na 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 na, and here's my address, and right, and uh, very matchmaking, right, takes place automatically, right, and you receive a call, right, from the guy, 
who is accepting the offer, all right, to come and fix it for you, all right, and of course, all right, you need to install all right, the platform in your city, all right. Uh, so uh, this is uh, uh, another one is Air uh, uh, BN, BNP, which is uh, bed and breakfast. Again, that's a marketplace all right, for people right, like me. All right. we, I don't want to sit right, in a five-star hotel. Right. I'm going to a conference. Right. It's, uh, I want a cheap place right, just to spend a right, couple of uh, nights, right, attend the conference and come. And there's many of them. Right. Arcade City, right, actually marketplace again for ride sharing. If I'm driving to work, right, and Dr. Tanzila, right, on the way, right, uh, to work, right, with me, we can fix, right, certain arrangement, right, uh, to go. So, uh, uh, what I'm saying, right, is, of course, right, uh, if any one of these system has uh, classification, machine learning, right, and uh, uh, statistics uh, analysis, right, and uh, very rich, right, uh, as a matter of fact, right, uh, to us, right, uh, uh, automation, right, is not uh, a haphazard thing, right, the platform, right, is uh, uh, not really very expensive, right, there is many actually, right, of these, right, are, uh, are offered, right, in, in India and Pakistan, right, you can go, right, and find out a nice platform, and uh, the, um, it's not really very expensive, yeah, anyway. what? So, so my, to make a right, actually my long story, red short, right, you see, I want to read, to raise the issue of this uh, uh, new business model with this uh, shared economy uh, uh, platforms, right, and, uh, and, and uh, why, right, this is uh, coming very strongly now, right, to, uh, as I read, right, in the abstract, to disrupt businesses and going right into hotel and uh, you see uh, this uh, hospitality all right and uh, food delivery and uh, you see ride sharing all right and uh, uh, many many areas and as a matter of fact right, the model is uh, interesting and uh, to us right actually as a technical people right uh, we uh, when we uh, uh, as presented today you read by both star and some uh, all these details are right about classification and priorities right and uh, time constraints right because all these systems are real time right how actually do is interact right with customers very interesting and very actually right uh, uh, useful right for people who are working with the technology, right, to uh, see, right, how it is applied uh, physically. Sorry, right, actually, for, uh, for uh, actually, the lengthy comments, right, uh, but uh, I thought, right, uh, since nobody is asking the questions, right, I would raise, right, uh, this issue of uh, yeah. internet. Thank you so much, Dr. Samah. Actually, Dr. Samah, really, thank you so much for the lovely, uh, I mean, walkthrough. And honestly, uh, your, your comment is, is very valid. And I think this slide, almost like summarize the amazing uh, description that you have put it and as well i've seen some some question from the from the audience from north uh, which which revolves around your point she was asking about digital transformation how it's being maintained on a daily basis what does it mean so digital um, and uh, let's be realistic digital, digital transformation has been like a, a buzzword uh, but in reality if you want to capitalize what what's the meaning of it it's about truly truly uh, reshaping the business, you know, in a new ways. Yeah, I mean, for example, quick example, uh, you, you can remember during the pandemic that uh, the food industry uh, were, let's say, shaky in the beginning. Yeah, I mean, some restaurants were freaking out. Yeah, I mean, and uh, especially around delivery times, uh, how they are going to cope up with their operations, they are going to lose money, etc. So you can, for example, take Maestro as an example. I hate to name brands, but Maestro, they changed their business model from selling, let's say, cooked food into raw food that you cook it on yourself. It doesn't cost them anything, but they change the idea. And that's the, that's the beauty about digital transformation that you need to change the idea and capitalize on the enabler layers, which is the business technology enablers, to fulfill your journey. It doesn't mean that uh, Maestro have done a trans full transformation, no. They have changed the idea, but for them to seek the, act the actual digital transformation, they need to link it with the entire value chain, which means that their fleet, their, let's say, uh, uh, I mean, RPAs, et cetera, to get the true, let's say, transformation aspect, but at least reshaping the idea, that's step one to change the actual uh, uh, line. And uh, 
it goes without saying, if you want to reshape your digital transformation, if you want to, let's say, put your digital transformation into action, it means that you need to, re you need to rethink on a granular level, what's my manufacturing life cycle? How am I gonna change my manufacturing uh, end to end? What's my financial domain? What's my HR practices that I need to reshape? For example, HR now are thinking about new ways of check pulsing the employee well, well being uh, on a daily basis. Without the, without the hassle of interaction one-to-one. -one. So it's about changing the ideas into, what, 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 into whatever fits for the organization to grow, then augmenting that idea with the, with the vessel that we have said here. And that's the beauty of service ticket intelligence as a simple example, not a full example, as a simple example to complement the story in some ways. And these some ways that we are highlighting are, for example, the customer. Yani if we take the intelligence suite, more or less what we have discussed today is about customer when we talk about service ticket intelligence and more or less about finance uh, when we came about invoice object recognition, uh, invoice object recommendation and procurement in that sense. And definitely there are many, many, uh, let's say AI business services that runs in parallel around these entire, uh, let's say uh, digital solutions or let's say core fundamental uh, areas of the journey. I hope that uh, clarify the question. Please feel free and don't shy out. If there is any further extrapolation, further questions, we are, we, we are really enjoying being with you and we are, let's say, having uh, the utmost fun. And honestly, I don't mind if you want to extend beyond 6 p.m. <laughs> to go further on questions, uh, the floor is yours. We are here, Yanni, at, at your service. Let me check the chat again, maybe some questions. Yeah, what's the difference between supervised and unsupervised machine learning? Could we get more clarification on, on that point? And I, I'm sensing that it might be about the training model. Would that be the case? Uh, Isam, would you uh, would you take this one for the training model, supervised and supervised uh, machine learning? Yeah. So actually, um, I'm I'm not uh, specialized in in this uh, area of the training model, how it works uh, the, uh, on the on the on the, uh, real in real on the system, but. Uh, if we talk about supervised, it's like uh, the way how, how I explained the invoice uh, object uh, classification model uh, use case. Uh, usually, the system actually doesn't take the, the decision, it just recommend. But uh, whenever uh, the, the confidence uh, in, in the system and its decision making processes increased, that's actually where we leave it to be unsupervised. So, the machine learning and the data and the training model actually works uh, by itself and take take the decisions directly and even take actions. So it take action and assign the tickets or the objects directly to the right uh, to the right people. Uh, I hope this answers your question. If it does not, uh, I can uh, get back to you uh, with someone. I can get in contact with someone who is in this bar and in this part and get back to you. Inshallah. By the way, uh, let me put an example that complements your story, Isam. If, uh, if we remember the, 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 the Concord, uh, tick, uh, let's say invoice capture, you can see that it asked me whether it's right or wrong. I can correct, which means that I am as a user, because I'm, I'm too, I'm, I'm let's say, uh, too cautious about the set of the invoice that will be settled for my, for me, which means I will I will have I will must not to miss and put the accurate and the correct uh, let's say amount because if I want to get paid for my for my invoices I need to put my correct uh, amount I don't need to put something more hence I'm gonna be part of let's say of the, uh, part of this uh, let's say uh, correction uh, uh, story but not the full correction. There will be another intermediate layer in the middle that can, let's say, double check and rectify based on the missing field that hasn't been seen uh, here. So in some cases, it will be a blend. 
it depends on the on, on, on the scenario itself whether it's let's say supervised driven or unsupervised driven but thank you so much for the question and as i saw mentioned we will get back in the, in the full detail on uh, on at least uh, the, the majority of use cases Are there questions uh, or clarifications or any comments, by the way? Any, uh, just like Dr. Tam have given us a really lovely co comment, we, uh, we really love to hear from you. Some, any, it's, it's better to, to co-think with, uh, with the audience, not to think uh, from one side. So thank you so much, Dr. Samah, and I really encourage people to, uh, to join us and uh, share their uh, point of views and, and views here. Okay, it seems there is no more questions, Mr. Tarek and Mr. Hassan. Anyone has any questions so far? No more questions. So if there is no questions, we oh, our event will be uh, closed. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much.